So Amit, I wanted to talk to you about this brand new project that has just been announced in Brickell. Um, you know, Mr. C's, right? The project that's coming to Coconut Grove. Yeah, totally. So the Cipriani family, who's behind Mr. C's, uh, is doing another development, uh, this time with Mast Capital, and it's going to be um, in Brickell. So totally different area, uh, but same uh, fantastic Cipriani name, um, and really uh, a tower that I think a lot of New Yorkers are going to like, um, just because of the quality and um, high-end finishes and, and some of the things that come along with it. Um, so it's going to be yeah. So what? So when I hear that name, obviously we hear it a lot in real estate. What would you say for people that haven't heard of the name, even though the name sounds like pretty cool, anyways? But what can you tell us about the family? So Cipriani is the family of Cipriani, the restaurant, um, Italian family, and it's synonymous with like white glove luxury, classic, elegance. Those are kind of the, um, some of the ideas that come to mind. Um, if you're familiar with the drink Bellini, uh, Cipriani, the restaurant is the place that invented the Bellini. Um, so that's just a little bit about them. Okay, cool. So sort of like um, when someone thinks about Tiffany, Tiffany's or whatever, it's like that, but with the restaurant and now they're, they're branding with, um, with condos and stuff. Yeah. Cool. Yep. So who would you say like typically would buy in Cipriani's? So, I mean, I think similar to the, the turnout for the Coconut Grove project, I think it's going to be a lot of Northeastern, um, you know, New York, Boston, um, because it buyers, because it has a very like timeless elegance to it. And it's not so... Um, it's not like that brand new, modern, all white kind of thing. It's it's more classic. And I think that that speaks to people from, you know, Manhattan and Boston and, you know, to Europeans as well, um, as opposed to, I mean, some of the other buyer pools that we have here. I think, you know, definitely uh, like French, English, it's going to be a little more, um, you know, people that appreciate, I guess, it's like, not stuffiness, but sophistication. Sort of like old money. Yeah, without saying it. Yeah, exactly. So not <laughs> okay, that, like, cool. Not, not the stuff I'm usually attracted to that like brand class, <laughs> that. but this is a little right. more, um, you know, classic, but beautiful. Yes, but yes, totally. So like in the past, for those of you that haven't seen the video, uh, Jade was talking about the standard. So this sounds like the opposite of that. Yeah, so the standard is very like hip and edgy and new and sexy. This is more like timeless, sailboat, um, caviar kind of crowd. Okay, cool. So for those people that don't know about like the Miami market and stuff, just mm -hmm. a quick synopsis. Like if you were to say your last five clients that you worked with, where are they from? I'm gonna look on my board. Um, okay. LA. Okay. LA, New York, um, San Francisco, Brazil, Germany, and California. Uh, another LA. You know, it's funny that you said that because I, 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 you know, obviously I do these videos as well. And I was mentioning in another video that like out of 10 clients that I get, probably five or six are from California yep. and based on your, it's the same, right? Yep. Yep. But you're a little bit more sophisticated than me, Jade, because you're getting other countries as well. You're getting Brazil and Europe and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Well, there, I mean, the European is, she's lived here, but she is from Germany. She's a good friend of mine, but, um, and then Brazil originally from Brazil, but now lives in San Francisco. So it depends on how you want to slice it. Okay, cool. So as far as the market, so today is March 10th, 2022. How would you describe the market if someone is buying and they haven't bought or they haven't looked at the market today and they're thinking about moving to Miami? What what advice would you I guess not advice, but how would you summarize the Miami market? 
intense. Um, <laughs> okay. One word that, that comes to mind. I remember last time or the time before that we were doing this, I was saying, you know, the single family home market's so competitive, which everyone knows, right? And so it's easy to get a deal on a condo. Um, that's becoming less and less and less common because I guess I'm not the only one who realized that, right? So um, what's, what is that doing? That's pushing people into the pre-construction market in order to get a good deal. Um, and so the market, it, it's very strong. It's not impossible, but you really have to kind of have the endurance to go through, you know, I mean, you're not, I mean, if you get something the first, on your first offer, that's extremely lucky. Uh, I'm telling my clients usually like 10 to 11 offers um, right now, just because there's so much competition. And especially if you're financing and like, God forbid, you want to keep an appraisal in there, that that's not going to happen. So there are certain, you know, things that, that have changed with this market. So it's, it's intense. Uh, it's doable. You just have to have the right people by your side. And, and that not only is us as realtors, but also, you know, the correct mortgage broker or lender, because if you have someone that doesn't know what they're doing or drops the ball, it gets really ugly, really fast. And the sellers don't care. They'll just go with the backup cash offer that they have. So, um, there are a bunch of pieces, I think that fit into the puzzle, um, that are kind of paramount being successful in the market because it's very strong. So if someone is a motivated buyer, they haven't bought in maybe six, seven years. One of the things you mentioned is no appraisal contingency, if you can help, if you can do it. Um, what about inspections? What would you say about inspections? Um, do, if you do get an inspection, I mean, I, I am still getting inspections accepted, but we do them very short. Um, the inspection period. And the thing is, even if things do come up in inspection, it's more for your knowledge than the seller is going to give you a credit because that's very unlikely to happen. Um, but we're doing right now, like around max seven days inspection. Okay. Uh, so that so still, still seven days. So that's not that bad, right? It's, no, it's not. It's, it's enough time to get the inspector there to go you know, to look at it, to find out all the ins and outs of the property. But just keep in mind that just because um, you have an inspection, that does not mean the seller is giving you a credit. Because I'm glad you, I'm glad you brought that up about having time to get the inspector there, because that's something a little bit different than in the past, right? Yeah, well, because they're so busy, right? Um, so even inspectors that are like next day, whatever, they'll take two days just because it, it, they're so backed up. Um, and appraisers are taking long and no one's taking an appraisal contingency. I mean, it's very rare if they do. And even if they do accept an appraisal contingency, if you ask them to decrease the price because of appraisal, they're not going to say yes. So it's like, you don't even have one anyway. It doesn't matter. Um, if you do get them to accept a financing contingency, that's amazing. Um, but then, again, that's only if you're denied, not if it under appraisal. So, yeah. One of the things that you do always, um, that other agents don't do. You know, typically what a real estate agent does is when they see a property that their client likes, they assume that the seller wants to close as soon as possible. They assume a lot of things. What you do is you ask the other agent besides the price, what else are your sellers looking for? You know, and you can't, I can't like stress how important that is, right? That communication with that other agent, um, then instead of just guessing. Well, I learned that from you, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You you've learned quite a bit without me, but no, that's definitely something I learned from you. Because a lot of times the sellers will have to buy something else, or they're renting, or they're moving out of state, and you need to work with them. And so maybe you have to do a lease back. Maybe they want a really long close um, for taxes, or who knows. Um, so we're having all sorts of strange um, circumstances right now. Right now we're under contract for one in the Gables, and we're doing a. <laughs> very inexpensive lease back um, after closing for two months. Cool. Okay. So we got an idea of the market and I'm going to share a photo of the building we're going to be talking about. Of course, these are renderings and um, from there, Jade is going to tell us more. Awesome. So yeah, that is um, the view <laughs> or not the view, but the, the, um, crown of the building, right, uh, of Cipriani residences in Brickell. So what is it? It's going to be on 1420 South Miami Avenue. Um, for anyone that knows Brickell, it's right across from a place called Bar Barseco. Um, 
and right across from one Broadway, there's like this big, big plot of land and Mass Capital is actually doing the renovation on, on one Broadway too, but there's this big plot of land and that's where it's going. Um, it is going to be 80 stories. So it's a monster. Mm -hmm. it, the tallest uh, tower in Brickell is uh, Panorama, the apartment building, which I think is 84. This is 80. So it's pretty, pretty close, right? I mean, that's huge. Most time, like Flatiron, I think is 64. 80 stories is high. That is a really, really, really tall building. Um, so what's cool about it? I mean, obviously you have a brand, you have the Cipriani name behind it. Um, you also are going to have an official Cipriani restaurant there that only the residents of the building can use. Uh, it's not going to be open to the public. Um, I think, Amit, you also have the picture of the pools. Do you have that? Yeah, I wanted to ask you before I get there. So if yeah. someone isn't from here and they're looking at this, what are they looking at? What is this area? What is this area? So that is, um, hold on, we have a suitcase going by. That uh, is Miami Beach, that where those tall buildings start in the background. Are these cruise ships there? Yes. Or am I? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's where the Royal Caribbean takes off from and the Virgin cruises as well go from there. And that, So this would be like South Beach? Yep. Fisher South Island? Fisher Island. And if you go more to the right, you're going to look at Coconut Grove, but it's not on there. Okay, cool. So I'm going to stop sharing this and I'm going to share the, the other one now so this you, is okay uh, you can see it good yeah, yeah i can see it so this is the pool level here um and it is the seventh and eighth floor right um, and you see you have two pools. One is more like an adult's pool. That's the one on the top. There's actually going to be like an alcohol bar and things like that up there. Um, and then the pool for everyone, kids and all that is on the seventh floor. Um, and then you see the hot tub there as well. Nice. So what I learned from you, since I'm not like cultured well, is it's not Cipriani's. It's like with an H, right? Yeah, it's Cipriani. Yeah, I didn't know that okay. either. So okay, cool. So yeah, this is this looks pretty cool. So do you, I, I know I'm giving you like a pop quiz, but do you know what what's here and what's here like around there? Or do you it's sort of hard to tell, right? With the where so the pool is? It's it's kind of strange. So there there's actually gonna be three towers, which not everyone is talking about. If you see at the edge of that pool, like on the north side, or I guess like on the front where the tip is, that is looking at you see one Broadway. That's the building there building oh, across okay. um there this? are actually three yeah that it's an okay. older building, renovated right now um there are three towers going here so one is the cipriani residences <clears throat> which is what we're talking about right um but there are two others that um are not going to be as high uh one's going to be 50 stories and 159 still incredibly tall towers but they're all rentals um, it's a totally separate thing. They're not sharing amenities, none of that. They're just next to each other. So this is on 14th. So you're not that far from Brickell City Center, right? You're pretty no, close you're, to it. The Brickell City Center is like between 7th and 8th. Um, so you're just a couple, couple blocks away. So you could, I mean, of course you can, but a normal person could jog there if they wanted yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah, if you actually go past it now, you'll see that they're like clearing the land, um, which is pretty fast. But what's really interesting about now, oh, like right now, March, what's today? The 10th, March 10th. Yeah. Is, so the developer has released 32 units, right? Seven of which have already been reserved, probably like 15 by now, by the time I'm telling this, because it was seven last night. Um, at this price for the first 32 units, the developer's not making any profit there. So this is the absolute bottom pricing, which is really cool because it's so hard to get into a project where you have, um, you know, that like rock bottom pricing. Uh, and then obviously from there, they increase, increase, increase and, and all that stuff. Um, so this is like the initial reservation kind of thing. Um, the construction is going to begin this uh, the end of 2022. 
um, and it's supposed to be completed um, end of 2025, early 2026, which is crazy that that's only a couple years away. Yeah, you know, it's funny, like, I, I don't know if people that are watching could, um, I guess, realize this. Jade knows how many they sold by last night. I mean, you're totally in the thick of things where you know all of this. I'm like, oh, I heard about this um, a while back, but I know nothing about it. And you know exactly how many are sold, how much they cost, what profit margin they're making. So it's it's really important to to know someone like that. Um, like Jade, because in this market, especially, could you imagine someone like if they reached out to you now, what they would pay compared to if the other person didn't know the agent didn't know about it and they reach out like two months from now, the difference yeah, but with pre-construction, I mean, you have to get in early in order to get a good, you know, I mean, you could still make money on it. It's not that, it's that you will make the most money the sooner you get in, which is actually something I, I, I sent to our client. Um, yesterday, you probably know who I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and guess what? I know in two weeks he's going to be like, Jade, let's do it. I'm going to be like, no, those are all gone. That pricing no longer exists. The longer you wait, the higher the prices go because the more they sell out, right? When you want it, everyone else already knows about it. Um, so that's why now is a really, really, really good time to get in. Architectonica, which has basically done everything in Miami, is the architect. Um, okay, so what's cool about it? Um, it's going to have a pickleball court, <laughs> right? So, which is funny because the standard is two. Right, right. That's why I was laughing. Okay. Um, Cipriani, the family, they're actually designing the cabinetry themselves, oh, wow. uh, is, which is pretty interesting. Uh, another awesome thing is that they're going to have limo service. Yeah, limo nice. service in three miles of the... Um, of the uh, tower. So if you wanna to go to Brickell City Center, if you wanna get dropped off, it's raining at Sexy Fish or whatever, you um, you could just take the limo, right? Nice, that's pretty, pretty cool. cool, yeah. So so like with you, because you have relationships with the, the developers, the people that are selling the units and stuff, what would someone, how would someone benefit from going to you? Uh, like well, we, what inside information do you have? Um, oh, well, we actually have stuff that I can't share, um, right. but floor plans that aren't officially released yet and um, views from different floors that also aren't officially released okay. yet. Um, so you can really see what you're buying. So my favorite lines in the building, because um, we went through the whole floor plan in the sales office and I don't even think she really knew 100%, you know, this was like, this is so premature. I mean, we're in such the beginning stage of this. Um, but anyway, so my favorite uh, floor plan is the 04. Well, there are two, the 04 and the 02. The 04 is on the, it's a corner wrap around balcony, huge. Um, and uh, it is, hold on, let me pull up this for a second. Oops. Can you still see me? No. Oh, okay. Well, the 04 is mm, right now, believe it or not, it's 1,867 square feet. It's two beds plus a den. It's it's huge. That's a huge two bed plus a yeah. den. Um, I mean, I'm only saying this for right now, but the price is 1.75. That's a wow. really good price. I mean, they're, right now they're they're like mid 900 a square foot because it's the earliest, earliest stage. And then the O2, which is east, looking east, looking at the water, is um, uh, 1.873 and a 530 square foot terrace. And that unit's 1900 square feet. It's wow. huge. So the units are really, 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 really big. Um, and, and they have really cool floor plans as well. They have the wraparound and they have three or two in the middle and then one on the um on the southeast side which is obviously the most expensive one and then two uh on, or then a few on the back as well looking west i obviously prefer the east view because you're looking at the water but the west view is nice too because you look at the sunset um yeah uh there is a unit the o3 unit actually has a storage which we never have in miami so i thought that was really smart um they obviously have private elevators um and 
what else do they have? I just, do I'm, you, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, do you know how many um, units are on the on an average floor? On the floor, uh, they have, well, let's see if it's 80 floors and there are 397 units and two to six, seven, eight amenities. So it's really, uh, nine to 80 and then take out the 13 floors so 70 floors right right uh, so it's like five and a half so probably right so five or six units yeah. per floor okay it get up it gets less it's usually what happens yeah. okay cool yeah do you so like as far as parking do you know if it has parking it does have parking so the parking is going to be between the second floor and the sixth floor um so to to the five floors of parking um they're gonna have the holistic spa they're gonna have a pet park a golf simulator you know all the miami bells and whistles um 10 foot ceilings which is really nice nice um, and i see the limo service we, we spoke about um and mm, i think that's all we have if someone if someone moves there, and I know you mentioned the surrounding areas a bit, but like someone's lifestyle, they they move there, they're not using the restaurant that is in the building. Where where what would someone do? What could they do to, like where would they eat? What would they do for fun? What would they do um, in the surrounding areas? Um, I mean, it's you don't really need a car, even though you have parking because you're in Brickell. So everything, right? Right. I mean, right across the street, you have Bar Seco, which is a bar. Um, you have uh, and like a Latin club at night. You have uh, Sexy Fish, which is a new restaurant that we got from London, um, right under Flatiron, which is just a couple blocks away. You have Brickell City Center for shopping, movies. They're actually putting a like a putting. What is that called? Like a putt? Putting green. Yeah, but there's a putty. What's the what are like? Put put or something something like that. Oh, okay, right, right, yeah. They're putting that in Brickell City Center. Like miniature uh, golf is that? Yeah, what you're talking? that's the word I was looking for. Miniature, okay. yeah, miniature golf. Um, in Brickell City Center, they have a movie theater, um, tons of shopping, basically everything you could think of. You don't need a car in Brickell. Um, it's actually probably harder to have a car. Uh, but where you are here at fourteen twenty, because you're at the south, you're in the south side of Brickell. It's easier to get in and out. Um, and hop on the the highway or US one um, as opposed to being more where Flatiron is, which is further um, north in Brickell because it's at the center and it's harder to get on the highway and get out of the traffic. Here you're towards like 14th, 15th, which is like more at the end of Brickell, and it's easy. You just literally hop right on. Yeah, when you start getting close to 10th and 8th, it starts to get pretty bad. So for those people that don't know. How far is South Beach from here? South Beach um, is about 15 minutes, 15 minute drive. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what else can you get to? Like if you drive, that's that's pretty close to this. Yeah, Brickell is very centrally located. You can walk and everything. Um, you're right next to downtown, uh, which is where the FTX, previously the American Airlines Arena is. Um, there's a Whole Foods right over the bridge in downtown. Um, you can get to Coconut Grove, which is about, I would say from here, it's probably 10 minutes away because you're on 14th. Um, so you can go down like South Bay Shore by there. Um, you can get to the Gables in probably 25 minutes, depending where in the Gables, uh, 20, 25 minutes. Um, you can go to the design districts. You can go north um, and that's about 15 minutes away. Um, you can What about go the airport? Airport, I would say 20. Okay um yeah like pushing 20 minutes like 18 20 minutes uh Wynwood 15 minutes um South Beach we said 15 um yeah Key Biscayne maybe 10 minutes which is another place to go to the beach um so really 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 centrally located like 15 20 20 minutes I would say uh from University of Miami if you want to buy in Cipriani and go to University of Miami <laughs> you could do that <laughs> tough life huh yeah <laughs> hard really hard life um so with this property do you know anything about like rental restrictions or is it too early no actually i that was one of the first questions i asked because it's a question that i get a lot um it's not it's a very residential building so this is not something that you're gonna really like use on airbnb you can't but um it's it's uh twice 
twice a year is the rental restriction. Um, and they haven't decided the minimum period if it's going to be a month or six months or three, uh, but it is twice a year. Okay, cool. Um, what else are you excited about in this building? Uh, I think just overall the, the brand, uh, it, it, it's really nice that they're doing the towers in the, in coconut Grove. Um, but I think it brings, like such an elegant classy brand to a new area um which is brickle and it, it kind of um i don't know it like interlaces the two and i think that um what maybe not now unless the people unless people are familiar with cipriani but as it becomes built and as people see it um i think that they'll realize the quality um, in the product, because there's no doubt uh, in my mind that this is going to be one of the highest quality things in Brickle, just because of the name behind it. And like, if you have seen uh, in Mr. C's, uh, the finishes are amazing. Um, they're really, really, really high end and high quality, and they're going to bring that to Brickle, which is something that not all of the buildings in Brickle have. Some of them have been kind of like slapped together, not flat out here, not Santa Maria, but there are a few <clears throat> brickle heights that um, kind of feel cheap, cheaply made, and this is not one of them, so it changes that. You know, it's funny when you were saying that, I was thinking before you said it, that um, brickle is becoming a little bit more upscale now with some of these new buildings, right? Yeah, you have, you have this, right? You have St. Regis, um, which is in my favorite area of brickle, which is like South Brickle. Um, you have St. Regis right on the water, which they're starting at 2.8. We can do a video on that later. It's a totally different product. Um, you have Una, which is going at the end of Brickle next to Key Biscayne. And that whole area, I mean, it's just, it's ripe for redevelopment because the buildings are old. So you're going to see a lot of, or at least my prediction is that you're going to see a lot of new towers coming there, um, coming to Brickle, high, high end stuff. Um, because I, I the new, you know, the people that are moving here want quality. It's a lot of people from New York as well, right? So they they compare this to their version of New York, I guess, in Miami. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, so anything else you want to share about the building or anything else? I would just say that it, even if so to reserve it right now, it's $150,000. Um, regardless of if it's a two bedroom or three or four, um, I would say do it. You have up until when the contract is written and then two weeks after, well, 15 days technically to cancel and get that money back, do it because you're not going to regret it. The prices are good right now. Um, and it's, it's going to be an amazing product and you can get in literally at the best pricing where the developer's not making a dollar. So why wouldn't you do that? Yeah, you know, it's so important when you say that, like, as far as what the developer makes, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, because I may be, but in the past, the developers, because obviously they finance the buildings and stuff, they're not paying cash, most of the buildings anyways, where they need to get a certain amount of sales to help with the construction loan and stuff. So the developers tend to make more later on then in the beginning, they're just trying to get the ball rolling. Exactly, kind of get the, the word out there and things like that. But it's funny because I'm sure people are gonna watch this in a couple months and be like, oh, that was... <laughs> but the, the pricing is probably, so right now you're starting with the low end, um, like mid 900 a square foot, under a thousand dollars a square foot. That's crazy for this kind of product. Um, and it's estimated that it'll be around 1400. Um, after the first 32 are sold or reserved rather. Uh, you know, it's cool though, because if someone does reach out to you in two months, you always have the pulse of it, of what's going on in the market. So whether it's this one or not, you're going to be able to say, okay, you're two months late. The price is 12 or 1300 or 1400 per square foot. But if you do it in this building, one of the things that I, I realize is people you know, because they're spending so much money, they don't trust you or me or whatever, because, you know, it's just human nature, but that's when they miss out a lot. You know, if you don't I, trust, go on. My, my clients that like my client that purchased in Missoni, um, I just said like, listen, like she had never done that kind of thing before. And I said, trust me, 
this is a good price. You're going to make money off of this. Um, you know, and <laughs> she, uh, we have it. The building's not done. It's going to be done this summer. When they're, when it's finished, she's going to make a killing. Um, she will have made over 50% after after everything. Um, and I, I, and why, because she trusted me. Uh, and that was it. You know, I, I brought a ton of people to that project and she was one that was just like, okay, I, I'm going to trust you and, and, and we're going to do it. Um, and I think sometimes you kind of just have to take that leap and, and, uh, in order to get such a good return, if you're buying it to, to sell it or, or, um, even to just get in at a good price. And when you don't, it doesn't always uh, <laughs> work out because everyone wants the tower when it's already built. Um, when you can see what it looks like when you can walk through it. Um, and that's why the prices increase, right? Uh, totally. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of sad because if someone sees both of us, just because you're, you'll be 26 and, you know, a couple months, you're still 25, but if they see you and they see me, they're going to ask me the questions because I'm older about these buildings. And when they ask me, I'm going to ask you, you know, it's, it's like, just because Jade is young does not mean she doesn't know more than anyone else. She does, you know? So if you don't trust Jade or me or whatever, watch the videos, the other videos first, look at some of her content and then reach out to her. Because the bottom line is if you reach out a couple months late, everything that we say that she says, it's not going to happen. You're not going to be able to make the 50% not that that's always going to happen, but like that our client is making because she trusted her. So that's, that's, you know, you have to do that. One of the things in life is you have to use your gut instincts to do well in life, because if you don't and you know something and everyone else knows something, there's no opportunity anymore. It's too late. The richest yeah. people use their gut instincts and they guess right before they do something. Not telling you to do this if you don't feel comfortable. If you see interview, interview after interview after interview with the rich, the richest people in the world, there's no concrete information that is telling them to make that decision. There's just enough where they can use their gut instinct to do it. So I'd recommend that with pre-construction. If you, you know, use Jade's connections, use her being able to know the pictures, the photos before anyone else does, the floor plans, because it'll definitely pay off in the future. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks guys for watching. If there's any other buildings that you want us to share besides the ones that Jade tells me, um, just let us know and we'll be happy to, to share them with you. Besides the information, I'm gonna put your contact information below if you're watching this on YouTube. How else could people reach out to you, Jade? Um, so the <clears throat> best way would probably be to just send me a message on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is Jade, J-A-D-E, Kalbacher, K-A-L-B-A-C-H-E-R. Just shoot me a message on there um, and I will answer. So yeah, just like how our name shows on the on Zoom. And just so you know, Jade has worked with billionaires. She's worked with millionaires and she's worked with first time buyers getting their first rental. So she's worked with everyone. So don't let that young face scare you into calling her to spend five million, you know? Yeah. All right. Thanks guys for watching. Um, I will stop this one second.